Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Go to Ireland, episode three. We will continue on our journey through the beautiful country of Ireland. So let's get on it. And the first stop here is the beautiful, beautiful Cliffs of Moher, located in Liscanor in County Clare. Cliffs of Moher, located on along the Wild Atlantic Way, is Ireland's top tourist attraction. It is located on the west coast of Ireland in the famous Wild Atlantic Way route. The cliffs rise from the ocean to 702 feet at their highest peak and are five miles long. The cliffs of Moher are part of a special protected area where over 20 different species are represented. The cliffs, along with the Burren National Park area, are also part of the UNESCO Global Geopark due to its being a special geological region. The cliffs take their name from the name of a ruined fort named Botar, and in Gaelic it means the ruin of a fort. O'Brien's Tower on the Cliffs of Moher. It is located at the highest point of the Cliffs of Moher. It was built in 1835 by the local landlord and Minister of Parliament, Sir Cornelius O'Brien, and it was to be used as an observation tower for the tourists. Cornelius O'Brien was a man ahead of his time, and he had deep-seated roots in Irish history, as he was a direct descendant of the first High King of Ireland, Brian Boru. He believed that developing tourism would help the local economy. Therefore, he built a tower to attract tourists to the beautiful cliffs of Moher. And that he did. Next stop is a typical Irish experience that everyone should get an experience of when you are visiting Ireland. This is the Rathbon Farm, a family sheep farm located in Ardrahan, County Galway. And you can see the sheep right here, very typical throughout of Ireland. You see them frolicking on the landscape and they can also cause some traffic disruptions, but it's quite an experience to see. At Rathbon Farm, you'll appreciate the traditional thatched roof cottage with painted stone walls. The picture below, you'll notice how intricately cut the thatched roof is, and it gives the building a quaint old world charm. While at Rathbone Farm, you'll be served fresh Irish breakfast tea with freshly baked scones with ginger preserved and whipped cream. For a small fee, you may purchase the recipe along with the tin used to cut the batter. You may also learn how to bake them on site. And if you visit early in the morning, Fenton and Francis will have freshly made Irish breakfast and there is lunch available too. 
And at Rathbond Farm, you can immerse yourself in all the activities of sheep farming while exploring the farm's grounds, such as these thatched roof homes, which you'll see throughout the Irish countryside. You also get an opportunity at how sheep are raised, sheep herding, and sheep shearing. And if you get lucky, you even get to feed the sheep. And while I visited there, I was able to see the running of the sheep or sheep herding, which you will see in the next slide. Kylemore Abbey and the Walled Gardens of Connemara County, Galway. So here is our next stop in County Galway, located in the beautiful and cultural region of Connemara. This is the beautiful Kylemore Abbey. It's one of the more popular tourist attractions in the Connemara region and its famous walled garden situated among a lush green, green landscape gives people the opportunity to walk among beautiful lush natural scenery. Kylemore Abbey is located in the Connemara region of West Ireland in County Galway. Connemara is known for its wild mountainous landscapes and lakes. It is a Gaeltacht region, which means it is one of the majority Irish speaking regions in Ireland where the Irish language and culture are kept intact. In this beautiful region, Kylemore Abbey was built originally for Mitchell Henry, a London doctor in 1868, and he moved there with his wife after having traveling there in the 1840s for their honeymoon. The Abbey remained in Henry's possession even when he returned to live in England, and then it was sold in 1903 to the Duke and Duchess of Manchester who resided there for many years before selling it due to a large gambling debt. In 1920, it was purchased by the Benedictine nuns who fled Ypres, Belgium, when their own convent was destroyed during World War I. Continuing on in Kyle Moore Abbey in the Walled Gardens, this is the chapel, and this is inside the house itself. The Benedictine nuns continue to provide Catholic education for girls and established a boarding school for international students and a day school for the local students. In 2010, the nuns were forced to close the school, but up to this day, Kylemore Abbey still functions as a working convent, offering spiritual retreats and other religious and educational activities. Besides the Abbey House, Kylemore Abbey has a chapel, as you can see on the left, which was consecrated as a Catholic house of worship when the nuns bought the Abbey. There is the walled garden, which is popular with tourists, as well as walking paths and a mausoleum where the original owners are buried. Most recently, the University of Notre Dame made a partnership with Kylemore Abbey titled Kylemore Abbey Global Center, where college students can go study abroad in nearby Galway or attend a summer program. After your visit, you can shop at their store or have lunch or tea or coffee at their restaurant and cafe. Now we visit the beautiful city of Galway. 
It's a picturesque seaside city on the northwest of Ireland. Galway is located in Northwest Ireland in County Galway along the Atlantic coast. It is famous for its vibrant lifestyle, festivals and other cultural events. It is also known as a university town as the National University of Ireland in Galway is located there. It is also known as the place where the famous Claddagh Ring comes from. So the city was first settled in 1124 by the King of Connacht, and it was named Dún Gailimhe, or Fort at the Mouth of the Gailim. During the Norman invasion of Connacht in the 1230s, Galway was captured by Richard Moore de Bourg. The new settlement was majorly controlled by the tribes of Galway which were a group of influential merchant families and they pushed for greater control of the walled cities. During the Middle Ages, Galway was ruled by 14 merchant families, most of them from Norman, Norman origin, while two were Irish. Because of this, it led to Galway to have a mayoral status by the English crown in 1484. During the late Middle Ages and the 15th centuries, Galway grew due to international trade, and it was the principal port of call in Ireland for trading with Spain and France. Christopher Columbus would stop at Galway in 1477 on a voyage to Iceland or the Faroe Islands. Nobody knows. During the 16th and 17th centuries, Galway remained loyal to the English crown, but in 1642, the city made alliances with the Catholic Confederation of Kilkenny. At the end of the 17th century, the city supported the Jacobite movement during the William White War in Ireland, but only for a short period of time. The city suffered from the potato famines in the 1840s, and it didn't fully recover until the tw late 20th century. Today, it is a lively, vibrant city, a university town, and it hosts many festivals, celebrations, and events throughout every year. In 2018, it was named the European Region of Gastronomy, and in 2020, it was named European Capital of Culture of 2020, along with the Croatian city of Rijeka. There are many places to visit in Galway, such as Lynch's Castle, a medieval house built by the Lynch family. There's Galway Cathedral, the Collegiate Church, as well as the Hardiman Hotel, Galway's oldest hotel from the 1840s. Also, you can visit the Claddagh neighborhood. This neighborhood is also known for being an Irish speaking enclave. And historically, the residents have been workers in fishing. For many years, the Claddagh neighborhood has had a king of sorts that worked to sell, settle or arbitrated disputes with the locals and had the privilege of a white sail on his fishing boat. The last true king was Martin Oliver, who died in 1972. Nowadays, the title is merely honorary and ceremonial in nature and the current king of Claddagh is Michael Lenski. The neighborhood is also known for the Claddagh Ring, which is shown on the right picture, is famous all across Ireland. The Claddagh Ring is a traditional Irish ring that represents love, loyalty, and friendship. The hands represent friendship, 
the heart represents love and the crown represents loyalty. The Clairdoc ring is part of a group of finger rings called fede rings. And the word fede derives from the Italian phrase mani in fede, or hands joined in faith. These fede rings date back to the Roman times when the gesture of clasped hands was a symbol of pledging vows and were used as engagement or wedding rings. Galway has produced the Clydog rings continuously since 1700, but the name Clydog ring started to be used since the 1830s. The way to properly use the Clydog ring is on the right hand with the point of the heart towards the fingertips, the wearer is single and looking for love. If the point of the heart is inward towards the wrist, it means the wearer is in a romantic relationship. On the left hand, if the point of the heart is outward towards the fingertips, it means the wearer is engaged. If the tip of the heart is inward or towards the wrist, it means the wearer is married. Today, you can buy an authentic Claddagh ring here in Galway or across Ireland, and it is a popular souvenir to buy. And here are some resources that you can take a look into. Again, the official tourism website, Ireland.com. The Cliffs of Moore, www.cliffsofmoor.ie. Rathbone Forum official website is www.rathbonforum.com. Kylemore Abbey, www.kylemoreabbey.com. City of Galway Tourism website, galwaytourism.ie. And some recommended Galway hotels. Connemara Coast Hotel, located in Furbo County, Galway. This is where I stayed, and it's beautiful and located along the Galway beaches. Hardeman Hotel, Galway's oldest hotel. In traveling to Ireland from the US, here are some COVID-19 restrictions that you can take a look at through the US State Department website. And next time on Let's Go to Ireland, it is the final episode, but it's going to be beautiful. We are going to cover the grandeur of Ashford Castle and its surrounding area. It is not to be missed. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.